very good morning to you why in the morning family i hope you did catch that interview by shiko kaitani about internships <laughs> we had quite a lot of fun doing that but anyway <coughs> now down to more serious issues i'd like to think i am hilda wazidi your host for today and you can join the discussion on 22162 starting with ym254 on twitter it's y254 tv channel on facebook it's y254 tv and if you are a, any other human being just like me you have experienced a loss or a major setback and today in the entrepreneurship tuesday we are going to discuss how to recover or how to resurrect your business after you have suffered a major setback. And with me, I have a guest from the manufacturing industry, Vita Foam, Foam Specialist, Rakesh Shah. Habariako. Habariako. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you for inviting me here. Yes. So he is the CEO, the Chief Executive Officer of Vita Foam. And two years ago, they suffered a major setback, which he's going to tell us about right now. Rakesh, yes. the floor is yours. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, two years ago, um, one fine uh, Friday evening, we had a fire and I was woken up at 10 to midnight mm -hmm. by my brother saying, mm -hmm. there's a fire in one of our premises and we've got to go. Mm -hmm. And the next thing was what, why, when, and how did this happen? Mm -hmm. What next mm -hmm. was in my mind. Mm -hmm. I had over 200 staff with me. Mm -hmm. um, all their lives at stake, mm -hmm. so waiting and wondering what's going to happen mm -hmm. to them and to us as a family. What caused the crisis? We're not too sure and mm -hmm. we're not too certain till today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Alright. So what was your initial <coughs> reaction? What, what was your first move as a CEO? Considering you're only 33 years of age and as we said you had <coughs> only one year into the job, what was your first reaction? What was the first order of business once you suffered the fire and well, it was done? <laughs> well, my idea was to get back into business as mm -hmm. fast as we can. Mm -hmm. That was the only thing in my mind. Mm -hmm. um, where get the machinery from mm -hmm. and how we get back up and running, mm -hmm. um, back into business. What was your boss's first comment? What did he ask you to do first? What did you tell your wife? Mm -hmm. Well, my wife was with me when I got the call mm -hmm. and constantly in, cu in touch with me. Mm -hmm. uh, we had just had our second child three weeks before that. Mm -hmm. So it was a shock. Um, I didn't know what was going to happen. Uh, nothing. But all I knew is there's one way forward and let's forget what's happened and move on. Mm -hmm. Just get back into business as fast as we can. Okay, so forget what's happened and move on and move on. Well, what's happened has happened. Mm -hmm. There's no way we can undo it mm -hmm. and it's only one way forward. Mm -hmm. All right, we're experiencing a bit of a technical hitch. We're going to take a short commercial break, but do not touch that dial. A very good morning to you. Why in the morning, family? We do apologize for that technical hitch. I am here with Rakesh Shah, the CEO of Vitaform, and we were <coughs> discussing on how you can resurrect your business after suffering a disaster or a major setback. However, Rakesh, yes. before we go there, yes. now that you're a CEO, why don't you give us a bit of background information about yourself? Where did you study? What did you study? What was your work experience? Because the previous interview before this one was about work experience. And how has it helped you so far before leading for the moments leading up to that tragedy? All right, okay. So work experience is one of the most important things uh, I have gone through. Mm -hmm. And I educated myself here in Kenya at St. Mary's. Mm -hmm. After that, I went to India in a boarding school. Mm -hmm. was there for five years. Mm -hmm. And... I went off to do my passion, which was graphic design in mm -hmm. uh, UK at Loughborough University. Mm -hmm. As a family business, I knew I was going to come back uh, into the business. So I went off to Australia and did business management mm -hmm. in Sydney. Mm -hmm. During my stay in England and Australia, mm -hmm. I did work during uh, my free time. Mm -hmm. So work experience has brought me where I am today. And what work did you do? I'm sure someone is like, ah, that's the CEO, he looks pretty young. Yeah. So in England, I worked behind the bar mm -hmm. while people were spending their money. <laughs> I was serving them drinks. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the best thing where I could save money. Mm -hmm. 
And in Australia, I actually had two jobs. I worked at the restaurant mm -hmm. and I worked for Domino's, mm -hmm. deli delivering pizzas. Mm -hmm. So I was a pizza boy, mm -hmm. if you can say that. So your work ethic, what work ethics did you pick from these different jobs that assisted you to get the position that you did get now? Time, consistency, uh, putting in your efforts, mm -hmm. and being honest mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Being honest. Yes. I like that one. All right. So you said that 20 months into your new job as a CEO at Vitaform, you experienced a tragedy. Yeah. How can you tell us about it all over again? In case you missed it, we're in the morning family. Mm -hmm. So as I mentioned, uh, one Friday evening, we locked up as we normally do. And that Friday night we had a fire. I was woken up by my brother, mm -hmm. um, as mentioned, and my wife and my child were with us. Mm -hmm. Went to work and s uh, see your entire life, mm -hmm. or your day to day, uh, where you spend eight hours or more mm -hmm. up in flames, burning in front of you. Mm -hmm. The fire brigade was there, um, almost six engines trying to fight the fire, but it was so huge and it carried on for four almost four days. Mm -hmm. All I knew at that time was there's over 200 people looking at me, waiting and wanting to know what is my next move. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what I was going to do, how I was going to do, do, do it and when I was going to do it. Mm -hmm. All I knew is we got to move forward mm -hmm. and get back the business get back into business running where we were. Mm -hmm. So how, how would you uh, explain to the why in the morning family how you handled the pressure at that particular time? So there was a lot of pressure mm -hmm. from everyone, your mm -hmm. stakeholders, mm -hmm. uh, I mean your customers first and foremost, mm -hmm. uh, the banks, mm -hmm. the insurance company, your auditors, mm -hmm. your staff and your family mm -hmm. at the end of the day. But I took each one at a time. I had to separate and segregate everything and every discussion I had, mm -hmm. um, sort of the way we are in this room talking mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. talk to everyone individually and try and put piece by piece together. Mm -hmm. um, I had a good three or four mentors mm -hmm. who still mentor me today. Mm -hmm. um, and thank you to them. Uh, we are where we are today, one year into it, up and running. Would you like to mention these mentors? And what, what role exactly did they play? What did they tell you? What was their guidance? Like if, for example, I was to wake up and I have a shop somewhere here with clothes and that's my everything, and then I come and find it's, it's down and I have employees and you ran to these particular people. What did they tell you? What was the first reaction? Mm -hmm. Mentors are mentors. Uh, mm -hmm. The reaction was that calm down, take a step back, mm -hmm. and we'll figure it out. Mm -hmm one step at a time. Mm -hmm. yep. All right. <coughs> in case you're also um, wondering why in the morning family, well, Rakesh, I have one interesting question for you. Being yeah. that you're an Indian, yeah. <laughs> um, what measures had you taken as a father? Because usually you're, you're known for family businesses, as you said, you got into the family business. What measures had you taken? What would you tell uh, prospective parents and the parents that are there right now on how they can handle their children leading up to the time when they join the world of entrepreneurship? Well, being a parent uh, obviously is not easy. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure my parents didn't find having me as a child very easy. <laughs> um, Mm -hmm. But discipline, uh, honesty, mm -hmm. and integrity. Mm -hmm. I think those were the three things uh, instant instituted into in me from a young age. Um, to be humble, mm -hmm. all, ev always in life. Mm -hmm. you know, no matter what we have, we've always got to be humble. Yeah. Yeah. What do you tell yourself every day when you wake up and go to your big office? What motivates you? Well, today I take it one day at a time, and mm -hmm. uh, I believe that uh, we're a new company with an old name, mm -hmm. so we're still mm -hmm. fresh in business. I'm still learning the ropes of business, even today. And I take every day as a fresh day and try and ensure that it was, it was better than yesterday. All right. 
I would like to ask you a question that uh, my director is, ad is actually urging me to ask you. How would you advise an upcoming entrepreneur to prepare themselves for a disaster like that? Wh what is the role of insurance? How did it help you? Mm -hmm. Okay, so as a company, a company, uh, any company or any business mm -hmm. today, or mm -hmm. in your family and your personal self, we all need insurance. Mm -hmm. As much as uh, we always hope nothing happens, mm -hmm. but we know that you need something for your backup. Mm -hmm. And ourselves as Vitafom, we had insurance, mm -hmm. fortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, we were adequately insured. Mm -hmm. And the important thing is to keep up with your insurance because we all progress and mm -hmm. pro move forward in life. We always want to buy new things or mm -hmm. we buy new machinery. So make sure that you update uh, the insurance company and keep in touch with the uh, current values and current times. Items may go up, items mm -hmm. may go down, depending on the currency, depending on the value, depending on what item it is. Mm -hmm. What's your take on the youth participation in entrepreneurship in Kenya? Is the environment conducive for us to participate, being that you are still a youth under the constitution of Kenya, you're only 33? Yes, it's, it is quite tough uh, mm -hmm. being a youth. It's mm -hmm. being, uh, um, the, the government is uh, putting in uh, ways and means to try and help us, but I think there's still more improvement that needs to be put in. There's a lot of youngsters out there looking for jobs mm -hmm. and coming out with brilliant degrees, but you find there are no jobs out there, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So we need a lot more industries, a lot more companies, mm -hmm. um, where we can all earn a living and, you know, make Kenya better. All right. Now that you're, the, you're at the creme de la creme, as most, as most youth would put it, you're a CEO, where do you see yourself still in the next three years, four, five, or should I say ten? Yeah. Considering you saying I'm a CEO, I don't <laughs> consider myself as a CEO. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I take part in every de department of the industry. Oh, I, mm -hmm. I do forming myself once in a while, mm -hmm. go and load vehicles. Where do I consider myself in two or three or five years' time? Um, having more people mm -hmm. under me, empowering more people. Um, and I'm hoping in maybe 10 years' time, we're a company that is uh, East and Central uh, African. Oh, now you want to be regional. We're looking at going regional mm -hmm. in the next uh, four to five years' time. What advice would you give a young entrepreneur somewhere who's very reluctant to start? what would you say to encourage them? If you were somebody's mentor, what would you say? What I would say is go ahead and start. Uh, the longer you delay, mm -hmm. it's costing you. Uh, the longer you stay in bed, <laughs> it's not helping anyone else, but uh, get out there, mm -hmm. do what you want to do, mm -hmm. and every day will get easier. Oh. Well, in the morning family, I hope you are listening. Now that you said you studied uh, graphic design, do you see yourself doing anything pertaining to graphic design in the future? So as we finished uh, a year at Vita from, uh, I went back to my passion mm -hmm. and got into designing. Mm -hmm. So currently we, s we started a new company called Home Garden and Patio, oh. where we do uh, everything to do with home garden and patio. Mm -hmm. So I do get into the designing of the pots, the benches, mm -hmm. and some of the furniture that we make here in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And it's all locally made. It's all locally made. Yes. All right, Mr. CEO. <coughs> One final thing. Yes. If, for example, I wanted to start uh, a business in terms, okay, maybe not uh, foam or stuff, but maybe in terms of selling clothes or shoes or something, and I wanted to find initial capital, what channels can I use to find initial capital to start my business? There are various channels to start your initial uh, business. Mm -hmm. Your first and foremost is your personal wealth, if you have it. Mm -hmm. If not, there are the banks, mm -hmm. your friends and family. Mm -hmm. um, or there are uh, venture capitalists out there like actors, etc. Depending on the size of your business, mm -hmm. um, they're willing to invest uh, in Africa and particularly in Kenya, mm -hmm. being a hub for Africa. What other channels can they use? What's your take on social media? Social media is... and, and you know, coming to Twitter, Facebook is important. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the easiest way and the fastest way of starting any business uh, today mm -hmm. in this current state. Mm -hmm. 
What has social media done for your company ever since it came in? What impact can you say social media has had on Vitafone? Social media has played uh, a, a role, uh, quite a big role in uh, Vitafone's uh, current situation mm -hmm. and to bring us where we are currently. Mm -hmm. uh, we advertise quite heavily through social media. Mm -hmm. um, all our products are there online mm -hmm. and it's easily accessible to most of the Kenyans. I think 90% of Kenyans mm -hmm. are online and it's the fastest way of getting in touch with uh, any company or any industry out there. The reason I'm asking about social media is because when your uh, disaster happened, how did you handle it through social media? Because usually that's the first avenue to get the most heat. So what did your social media team do about you? crisis or what can you do in terms of crisis with social media D depends how you handle it it could take you down it could uh, <laughs> take you up <laughs> so my team handled it quite well I mm -hmm. think they went out and uh, thanked everyone uh, for the messages that came in mm -hmm. and said that uh, in a matter of time uh, we will whatever orders were taken would be satisfied and new orders unfortunately were not taken for about six weeks until we were back up and running. How did you keep the business afloat for six weeks? Isn't that almost uh, so one and a half months? Yeah, so it took us longer than six weeks. So mm -hmm. It took us actually six months. Uh, mm -hmm. We subcontracted and sub-manufactured mm -hmm. uh, from a local entity here mm -hmm. and from neighboring countries under the brand name of uh, Vitafom. So mm -hmm. we gave them our specification mm -hmm. and gave them our label and they branded and we imported mattresses mm -hmm. just to keep the name alive. Oh, so you, you invested in partnerships? Yes, we invested into partnership and mm -hmm. uh, we thank our partners for that. So partnership helped you stay afloat during that particular time? Those, those few mad months we had. Those are the tips I'm looking for. Give us step by step. What did you do first? What did you do next? What did you do third? What did you do fourth? All right, so first thing after <laughs> the fire, obviously once the heat went off after a week or two, mm -hmm. I, I took a flight to... Arusha, mm -hmm. where we have tan foam, mm -hmm. and sat down with them, and they said whatever mattresses we need or pillows or products we need, mm -hmm. they, w they immediately started manufacturing those for us, oh. and we had truckloads every mm -hmm. week, truckloads of uh, goods of mattresses coming in, mm -hmm. just to keep the name alive. Mm -hmm. After that, we went down to Kisumu mm -hmm. and went to Tough Foam, mm -hmm. and uh, Mr. Patel there held my hand. So you and went I to the competition? I went to our competitors here uh -huh. in Kenya uh -huh. because that was the easiest. Being a foam manufacturer, it's a bulky product. Mm -hmm. So it was very difficult mm -hmm. importing this product. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have to manufacture it mm -hmm. in Kenya. Mm -hmm. So I went down to our competitor and I thanked Mr. Patel for holding my hand mm -hmm. um, even till today mm -hmm. um, in trying to get back uh, Vita Foam up. So after you went to the competition and they helped you manufacture or supply whatever you needed to supply to stay yeah. afloat, what did you do next? So we immediately worked on our machinery mm -hmm. and, imp and uh, started uh, manufacturing the foam itself locally. Mm -hmm. Once we started that with our own production of a block or two blocks a day, mm -hmm. uh, we reduced uh, input from the, from the competition mm -hmm. and obviously we were up and running on our side. All right. So actually, your friend, your enemy can be your friend in times of crisis. That's what I've understood. So it's good to to liars the partnerships. 100%. What did you tell your employees? How did you keep your employees afloat for those six weeks? So all our employees uh, were still on the payroll. Mm -hmm. They got paid for almost about uh, four to six months. Mm -hmm. We had a, a union, mm -hmm. which uh, we settled uh, with the union. We mm -hmm. paid all our staff off, mm -hmm. and management staff and the few stuff that we needed we re retain them mm -hmm. and the rest of them they got uh, paid early year of service and uh, mm -hmm. early retirement mm -hmm. until further time when we needed them what was the response from the market once you were up on your feet because usually when a product disappears or maybe like if i come to a shop tomorrow or i was used to going to this particular clothing store and i come and find okay this building burnt and there's another clothing store next door so I start going to that clothing store. Then you guys rebuild. How did the market react? Like, did your customers come back or what happened? So it's, it's still tough mm -hmm. for us to try and get back our customers mm -hmm. because once your customer leaves you and they're happy with the next customer, mm -hmm. they're satisfied. Mm -hmm. So 
trying to get them back uh, has been tough and is tough. Mm -hmm. But you've got to be persistent and keep visiting them. And more than having the business, I think it's the relationship that you built with that particular individual. Okay. What is helping us today is the relationship that we had. All right. Um, Why in the morning family, I hope you have understood the first thing he did was go to the competition and his partners to help him stay afloat during that time. He made sure his employees were taken care of. Sadly, he said that he has survived because he built proper relationships with his customers. So even if the business went down, they still came back when it was time to come up. Anything else you'd like to tell us in terms of disaster management? What I would say is that be prepared uh, because mm -hmm. nobody knows uh, what's in for the future and always have measures in place uh, for mm -hmm. disaster man management recovery, mm -hmm. especially for industries mm -hmm. and businesses. Make sure you have a manual that your management staff know what happens next. Oh. And this is a learning lesson at Betaform. We never had one, but henceforth, oh. we always have one. Even this year, we're just about prepared mm -hmm. or almost finalized for this year. Because mm -hmm. you have some changes that you make every year. Oh. But have a management disaster manual Plan. in place. All right. Yeah. So that you can have it easier even to deal with the next crisis was it to happen again. Now, Vitaform, you specialize in mattresses, duvets, carpets. Why this particular industry? <laughs> Why mattresses? Why? So Vitaform has been already celebrating its 50th uh, mm -hmm. year in Kenya. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it was a British company and uh, been run by uh, British Vita. Mm -hmm. My parents bought over in the late 80s. Oh, uh -huh. And that's why we got back. I, I came back into this business. Mm -hmm. So as you mentioned, we manufacture mattresses, pillows, mm -hmm. duvets, cushions, mm -hmm. foam sheets. Mm -hmm. We've now diversified into furniture. We've mm -hmm. gone into the non-woven mm -hmm. bags mm -hmm. um, and home garden and patio products. Mm -hmm. So your raw materials, do you get them here in Kenya or do you bring them no, in from outside? No, 99% of our raw materials are all imported. Oh. Uh -huh. Mostly from Germany, mm -hmm. from India, mm -hmm. from Korea, mm -hmm. from China. Mm -hmm. From the chemical to the fabric to the machinery itself, uh, unfortunately it's all imported from overseas. Why, why import and not get from Kenya? The main ingredient uh, for raw material is crude oil mm -hmm. and it's a process that uh, needs a huge facility and it's one of the petrochemical companies that oh. supply us mm -hmm. our chemicals. So before it becomes your petrol and diesel, um, it's the same family as mm -hmm. your petrochemical. If so I wanted to get into the industry of home, yeah. how would I start? So if you wanted to get into the foam industry, the first thing is to look for a market, find mm -hmm. which is the niche, which is the market you're looking at. Is mm -hmm. it mattresses? Is mm -hmm. it the furniture? Mm -hmm. Identify that mm -hmm. and uh, set up a shop, do your market research, mm -hmm. start off with uh, selling the products, test mm -hmm. the market. Mm -hmm. And if you want to get into the business, then um, you obviously can get into uh, machineries. So you test the market, because uh, you told me you first started with the mattresses, but then later on you diversified into the furniture. So as a young entrepreneur, how do you know what to diversify into? I don't actually know what to diversify into, uh -huh. to be honest. After mattresses, uh, what goes with the mattresses is your bed Beds. and your bedside, your mm -hmm. bedside tables, mm -hmm. mirrors. So we decided as Vitaform, we're trying to go and provide you the entire solution to your bedroom. Mm -hmm. And from there, we went on to your living room and your uh, bathroom and accessories. So basically, you diversify into things that complement your product. Yes. If you're going to diversify, diversify into products that complement your product. All right. Any yeah. final quotes? You still haven't told me what you tell yourself in the morning every time you wake up. What do you tell yourself? You say, Rakesh, when you look in the mirror and then... Well, I, I thank God that <laughs> I'm alive and we're still all here. Uh -huh. And every day is a new day, like I said, and uh, we have to work harder. So mm -hmm. for me personally, I, I say to myself, today's a new opportunity. Mm -hmm. How can I make today better than yesterday? Mm -hmm. So when you were in your, in your current uh, work crisis, you had a young family. 
How did you manage the crisis at <coughs> home? Now, aside from work, how did you manage the crisis at home? So I had a young daughter called Kavya, two and a half years old. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were fortunate with a second daughter called Anea, and she was just born three weeks before the fire. Mm -hmm. I was fortunate Three weeks before the fire? Yes. All right. Uh -huh. um, I was fortunate that my wife, uh, is there and has helped me through uh, the entire process mm -hmm. uh, with my in-laws and my my family as well mm -hmm. so for the first year i was actually not at home uh, to be honest um, oh. trying to put up the family all right yeah. okay so you've said you had a proper support system at home that also enabled you to to bring up the business uh, and bring it as fast as uh, i could in the year time okay least. thank you so much rakesh thank you very much Yes, we in the morning family. I hope you have heard on how you can manage a crisis. Also, always be prepared from what I've understood because when it happened to them the first time, they created a manual on disaster management and how they would handle it as a company if it was to happen again. They talked about making partnerships and also going to the competition to assist you in times of trouble. He also talked about building relationships with your customers so that when you do face crisis, you can still have your customers coming back to you and also to diversify into things that complement your products. While you have been watching Why in the Morning, it's Entrepreneurs Tuesday. I am Hilda Wadidi. Keep it Why in the Morning.